Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome, I think I finally got this working. All right, Reborn once again showing its problemat problematic temperament. Anyway, welcome to this Mount Herman Charity Tournament. With these two teams, Safira TV and Team Bad English, my name is Morality Claus and I will be your caster for tonight. Unfortunately, we had some technical issues thanks to Reborn's, once again, great state of affair. It's enraging, really. Beta test my arse. Anyway, as you can see, Safira TV picked Tusk first once again. And we seem to be having some issues. Reborn, please. Alright, here we go. Safira TV did first pick Tusk once again, following up with a Dazzle and Ember Spirit and Alina. Seem to be comfortable with the Tusk. They all are also comfortable with the Ember Spirit. They are picking up Alina simply because she can burst down almost everyone in this game. Alt going through Magic Immunity is a great addition versus the Juggernaut who can spin to win it away. Uh, and is if you have a oh an eggs though, so you have to remember the jug will probably not spin uh, after like 30 minutes if he doesn't need to. Anyway, but Bane, I mean, they great thing control and works together with the jug pr pretty well with the nightmare. You can spin up behind the guy, block him, and make sure Bane can keep him there for a nice amount of while. Winter Wyvern does synergize somewhat, but doesn't synergize the best. I think it's just more of a comfort pick and the dark suit. We've already talked about the dark suit enough. Good initiation and it works together with the Winter Wyvern well. The Bane is there to provide single target backup and the Juggernaut is there to play the carry. All they really need now is more of a mid player. Team Bad English and they will pick him up here. Uh, we'll look towards the bands. Um, we have Queen of Tame banned out by the <clears throat> by Team Bad English. We have Doom banned out as well by Team Bad English. These are all standard bands. Uh, on the side of Severe TV, they banned out the Io, they banned out the Shadow Fiend, so more mid control going away, TA as well, so basically very little mids left in the pool right now. Um, so what are we looking at on Severe TV side? We've got a Dusk, we have a Dazzle, we have an Ember Spirit, we have a Lina. All these are very good at taking down single targets, especially the Dusk and the Lina, the Dazzle can provide backup and can also dish out a lot of damage with him with his shadow wave in the early game. Good lane control on their side. Ember Spirit will probably be going mid. They might play him as a carry though with the Dazzle and the Lina as backup Tusk on the off lane. But Team Bad English do pick up an Invoker as their final pick and their mid. So, without further ado, let's have a look at what Safira TV's last pick will be. And Considering their current state of affairs, Lena can be played mid, so they might pick up an off lane, a mid, or a carry. Now, they left relative a lot open, but I don't think Lena will be playing mid against an Invoker. I mean, it does work to some extent, the 650 range will do a lot, but Invoker is a very strong presence on his own, and if he can survive through the first few levels, the Lena will get blown up, especially with ganks from the Bane. Now, what are we looking at here? Uh, we can see Spirit Breaker was banned out by Sophia TV, a team... Um, a, a hero that really just has seen a resurgence over the last meta or so. He's annoying to play against, he provides a good lane control, he's got a lot of health, so he's a, basically a very nice tank. But... Wind range as well, the DPS, they just didn't want to handle the DPS, and Shackles have been feeling a bit bugged, like, slash broken. So, you know, it's just the way it works, really. I mean, good Lena players will know how to abuse a good Lena. Good Wind Ranger players will know how to abuse the Shackle to its maximum potential, and that's how you should play Wind Rage. But the DPS is what people are looking out for today. It's just the old combined with the Aghanim Scepter can be so potent and can break through so much. Especially this t kind of team where if you get stunned, you will fall quickly. Uh, Lena falls quickly, Tusk does fall quickly, unless he can get his snowball up. But even then, what can he say? Io, of course, is a standard ban these days. Team Bad English did probably not want to run the Io if you're looking at the fight. But maybe, you know, maybe, you know, they might have picked up a tiny along the way. First ban phase Io might have been a good choice here. And, of course, the Doom being banned out, the carry, the... Uh, You've already talked about him a lot. Now, the Undying and the Silence are banned are probably just to counteract the strategies that would come up here. Silence especially was would probably wreck a lot of just the synergy they have. Now, with the Invoke on the field, Silence would probably have been a devastating counterpick, but they do pick up a Nyx, 
which is also pretty good against the four int heroes they have. It's an, it's an option we haven't talked about. Nyx has not been seen a lot lately. So, without further ado, let's get into this game. Let's get into this match between Sephiro TV and Team Bad English. On the line, what are on the line? Well, not much, but you can donate for charity if you do want. To support charity, support save the children, to save all the children refugees, to save all the children in war zones. What are these teams playing for? They're playing for the cause. That's the fourth that counts, and if they win this, they will uh, probably ascend to getting some imaginary trophy of being the best team in a charity tournament. You know, it can, it, it, it's, it's, it's great fun. Why not? You would do it as well, wouldn't you? Um, yep, and so the game should be coming underway very soon. And here we have the complimentary pause right into the start of the game. Um, how long is asked? And I will click that button. And no, that one. Good, okay. Everything is good. Now let's discuss about the synergies here. Now, TBE have teamfight synergy beyond compare. They have... A Darkseer. They have a Winter Wyvern, which just hasn't shown up yet. These two alone can just uh, win team fights on their own. Um, combined with the Jug, I mean, the Jug isn't really more of a team fighting hero unless he gets an axe on his Omni Slash, which he might get. You know, it can happen, but uh, um, you know, it's sort of a situational pickup. I guess he might get it this time after his Battle Fury or something. He will probably be getting a Battle Fury. Um, I assume at least. Because of the team fight synergy they have with the entire team. Now, <clears throat> what else are we looking at here? The Invoke, of course, provides a lot in that case. Let's have a look at what Sephira have to offer, though. I mean... Their single target is unrivaled. They can just be uh, light brown. Well, light brown. I hope you can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> uh, we need a moment. Ha! Funny. A moment. Get it? It's right there. Oh, hang on. There. A moment, you see. No. <clears throat> now. <laughs> now. Their single target is unrivaled. <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> anyway, um, their single target is unrivaled. We have a look at the Lena, we have a look at this, we have a look at the Ember, we have the Tusk, and we have the Nyx. Uh, Tuss, I mean, Ember and Dazzle don't really fit into the whole thing, but they can work towards it. I mean, Ember can provide a lot of AoE damage, which they don't have, and can also provide a nice amount of single target DPS if he is chasing someone down. The Tusk and the Lina combos, and the Nyx, is probably going to be one I'm going to look at the most here. Now... Yeah, the, 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 the saving grace in these team fights is going to have to be the Ember getting an early lead in farm. That's the only way they're going to really win this, unless they can get, like, I don't know, Dagon 5s on everyone. Because, uh, I mean, TBE have better late game and they have better mid game. Top kick. Uh, have better mid and better late game. I mean, Sephira really need, like... I mean, maybe the mid game could be a bit... You know, can be debated, but definitely better late game with this kind of lineup. Uh, Sephira can counter it somewhat, but not really to the extent that they want. They don't really have much in the terms of single target DPS, which is other than the Ember, really, and he's more AoE. So that could be a problem. And of course, people are telling me to put up game stats. The game hasn't even fucking started yet, so shut up, Twitch chat. Now, oh, there you go. Hey, no, actually, let's do that. Last hit denies. Zero and zero. Great. Who gives a shit? Nah, I'm joking. I love you, Twitch chat. Anyway. <clears throat> well, I mean... 
really there's not much much to say. I mean, Safira can get out of fights easy if they have the Dazzle on the backup of the Ember, but they really need the Ember to make these fights work in the late game. And in the mid game, it will do just fine. In the early game... In the early game. Okay, your brown is good. Yeah, okay. Um, in the early game, I don't think they... I mean, in the early game, I think definitely Safira hold the lead because TB requires a bit more momentum to get going. Mid game, if TB does get the early game, they can roll over to Safira. The snowballs should be real. And of course, we're looking at the brown player here. Who is brown? Who is Tusk? It's Kupe. Kukupe. Kwepe. Mistake to not ban that IMO. Well, ladies and gentlemen, foreshadowing for Purge next game. Keep your fingers crossed. Right then, let's introduce the teams. Team Bang English Giga will be playing the Bane. We will have Gedrox on the Juggernaut. We will have at the speed of life on the Invoker, who is heading down with the other guys. Weird. We have Pwn playing the Darks here, probably going towards the offlane with the Soul Ring already bought up, and Senegata playing the Winter Wyvern, which will be going mid. I'm not complaining. And we have a smoked up Sephira with Luft playing the uh, Nyx, Quipe playing the Tusk, a moment playing Dazzle, a moment. Subrak playing the Ember Spirit, and last but not least, Fuhu playing the TV, Fuhu TV playing the Lena, and now they already find at the speed of life, everyone in the snowball, that's a lot of damage, but not enough. Oh yes it is, with the follow up from Fuhu to get take first blood from the Invoker. And that will be a nice lead, although it's only split gold, so they can't really uh, use it to do much. And before the pawn has even blown, that is one good thing. And they've also got an award down. This should be this should make TBE a bit more. Hmm. Should try and force them awake here, basically. Tell them no, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get the good early game you want. See the gold change wasn't much. It was only 85, which is good, but it's and it's only 25 XP with Still, it's moral damage, it's moral damage. And meanwhile, on the top lane, we have Pone and Zenigata coming in with back up the speed of life. He's got no invoke, unfortunately, has been to take Q level 1, so Quepe will not die here. Uh, no exhort, I meant to say. So, already one kill for Sephira. But will that continue? Will they continue at that pace? And the answer is maybe. The answer is they could. And the answer is, what the heck is that? Some attempt to making transparency. Anyway, let's focus on the lanes then. Lena mid versus the Invoker. I mean, it works. It works. It basically works. There's no one else that can really do it. I mean, the Nyx could go mid, but that's versus an Invoker. So it's melee versus ranged, which is an unfavorable matchup anyway. And the Nyx doesn't really need too many levels. I think he's perfectly happy staying alone on the uh, solo safe lane here. I mean, of course, levels are always nice. Thing is, where is Quepe? So Quepe is on the aggressive try lane with a moment and Subrak, which does make sense, but now they've got the spin to win going on from Gedrox. I'm sorry, Blade Fury. I mean, on from Gedrox, which does a lot of damage for a moment. They've got to tr already try and force it out here, and then we go. With Senegal to getting the kill, and now Quepe and Subrak want to try and get a return kill, but Gedrox is just dealing too much damage, has to bowlers up. And will escape out of that fight alight alive. That's a decent amount of gold going the way of Team Bad English, especially on this defensive try lane that they have to resort against the offensive one. I mean, Sephira can go be aggressive as long as a moment is alive and has mana, and that's good. I mean, that's what they really want. Um, now this is interesting. Lena's going deep here. Wants to deny the speed of life them as much farm as possible. He's not going bottle, of course. He's going uh, probably going boots first. Although he might be getting a bottle, just getting the blades of attack for the casual damage. It really depends on how his lane is going. And right now, the last hit to the nice do tell a sad story. Really, he can't much. They can't last it much without those exhort levels. Even the blades of attack are not doing much miserable base damage versus the Lena, who has a lot more on him. So. At this point, I would suggest just going bottle and trying to get pick up kills some other way. Maybe, maybe even picking up a few tangos. Decides he needs to regen, I guess. On the bot lane, nothing much has happened. Really, what they're trying to do is to try to deny Getrox as much farm as possible. Um, and the thing is, will that happen?
I mean, it's not really working out too well. He's got 7 and 1, but Darkseer is 13 and 3. Now, you know, this is actually funny, like, Zephyro doing some really unorthodox combo here. Um, with the Subrak on the aggressive try, he's not going to get much harm at all. They're relying on him to get kills and snowball out of the way like that, but the problem is he's already lost one person from his try lane. I'm going to say, if they lose another engagement like that again, it's going to be over. Uh, meanwhile, some deep dives here. Love taking a lot of damage from Pwn. Pwn, who is ahead by 17-3, who are happy darks at level 5 by 3 minutes. That is some top-notch stuff. Luft, on the other hand, is 4 by 3, which most people would consider okay, but it's fine. But right now, behind on the darks here. Now, Kwepe's rotating into mid. Wants to try and get a kill on at the speed of life. What next set is that is the question, and the answer I can tell you is some legendary one, I'm not sure. It is the tail, is this the Rafing Executioner with some Christ wreck of racing? Without the talents, the talents inscribed babe, the Colossal Blade. Anyway, moving on. Uh, rune Control coming into, coming in bot <clears throat> by the Dazzle. Denying the defensive tri lane, although Giga already has his boots. Um, so he can chase down a moment if he wants to. Doesn't pursue. Tornado's out for the invoker. He does, he's going cross Wex. I mean, that's what you expect if he has Quex first, but. Rents again, denying the exhort means he's going to get very little in the way of farm, and he's deciding to go straight face boots first just so he can get a bit more damage. I would suggest a bottle because of situations like that where you're suddenly using one spell and out of mana. And there's the pause from the Juggernaut. Tactical pause, I assume. Or just some random pause. We'll see what the reasons are later. Darkseer is now level 6. That is... Uh, after four minutes, and he's actually rivaling the mid lane on farm. Torch notch last hit, top notch last hitting. I have to say, that is some really, really good last hitting. It's I mean, Nyx cannot really hold that with that with twelve to two. It's really hard for the Nyx to hold with that. Uh, He's going to hit level 6 though, and then he's going to need to start finding kills to just right, catch up. Or maybe not kills, trying to find a solo lane for himself so he can gain a bit more levels. Getrox is level 4 and only has 21 last hits. I mean, only is relative. But you really want, like, a bit more as a joke. And now he's dealing a lot of damage to Soul. Oh, that's too lucky, Chris. <laughs> Superax is going to hurt from that one. Bane rotating mid to get the Lina. Missed that one. That was a free man rotation on the bot mid lane. That was a good amount of gold going the way of TBE there. And now the speed of life has a bit more space to farm with now his 84 boot base damage. And we will watch. I already have a couple of good plays towards here. This should spot out ganks or just help coming in from the lane. Top lane. And this here to spot out the jungle. They will all expire soon alongside with that dire ward here. Uh, that dial wood here is still pretty fresh, but it will be dewarded by DBE. Doing pretty well for himself. And Gedrox is pushing up far. These those fast hits is now top last hit of the game. But he really needs more. He's died once, though. No, he has one assist, so. Quite page. <laughs> so, yeah. He's got face boots already, which is okay. Giga only with level 3. In fact, let's have a look at the zero levels in Kwepe. Kwepe. Ah. I'm going to say Kwepe. Um, not to be confused with the other Kwepe, I believe. Has level 2. It's not great. I mean, Snowball is providing versatility, but that's it, really. Does place a sneaky ward to block off this and also to watch out for rotations. A moment with level 3. And rewarding. Really not much going on right now. Uh, Subrak has rotated top to try and get some of those sneaky last hits. 
Discovered the aggressive try was not working. In fact, the entirety of Team Safira is now rotating away from the bot lane, except for Coupe, who decides to head back to the bot lane, try and soak up some of that solo XP. Uh, Luft on the invis as well, so now some ganks should be coming out from the side of Safira of the level 6, but here we go. Bane decides to brain sap. Gedrox will roll in. There's the Omni Slash. And Fuhu will... Oh, what a dodge, though. Nightmare coming out from Gig as well. Oh, that was... That was brutal. But now Luft is looking for revenge. Misses the stun. Gets the mana burn up on Gedrox. But now, where is the backup from for Sephira? They completely mistimed this. TBE is rotating in. And now here comes the Nightmare with the Cold Snap onto Giga. Trying to get as much help as possible. Luft is really in a... In a bad situation now. Brain Zap comes in, doesn't actually kill him. Will Fuhu die? No, Tornado just falls short now. Fuhu on the run, but will not be pursued. I said a lot of things wrong. It was, of course, not Fuhu dying. Gedrox once again spinning at right the right moment. Winter Wyvern coming in. Zenigata to save the day. And once again, Safira notices that they can't just do that. They tried to walk into a gank bed and completely failed. Completely failed. Yeah, they need to coordinate these better. I'm going to guess that was miscommunication as well. The missed, uh, the missed shot from the Lina was probably also a catalyzer for losing the fight. Not merely missed, mainly just good reactions from the Juggernaut. Edrox. Who takes that with pride. 14-13 by 8 minutes. 50 is like the minimum you want to have. 80 is the maximum you can have, so he's doing alright. Darkseer is still going to probably finish ahead of him. And that's one happy little Darkseer. He's already got a Ring of Regen, he's got the Mana Boots, he's got the Soul Ring. Building up towards that mech, it's going to be a pretty quick mech if you think about it. I know Coupe has regained some of the lost levels. But will once again be ganked upon. Here's the Nightmare, here comes Gedrox with the spin. And there's the Brains up to finish the job. Yeah, they really need to... Mm, this lane is dangerous. This lane is becoming more and more dangerous. If you know, As long as they stay on it. I mean, just look at this. It's just giving the Juggernaut 200 gold per kill. Uh, that's basically just, you know, five creeps you're giving him right there. And he can farm up the rest, so... It's not too great of a situation. And he's already got the... He's already got a ring of Aqualium face boots. He's building up towards the Battle Fury, so we should probably we probably won't be seeing much of him. Instead, let's look mid. Tusk sniping off the Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern low for some reason. And Tusk gains a nice bonus from that. Meanwhile, Dazzle gets ganked upon by Giga. Giga brain tap is just too strong for him. Dazzle tries to deny the Nightmare. Nightmare keeps it in place though while Gedrox walks in. Shallow Grave to finish the job. No. Trying to heal up, but now look. Right in the Ancients, Nyx is looking for a kill here, but they're all too quick. 350 versus 370 movement sees. Yeah. It's not going to work. And that was like an easy kill for TBE right there. <laughs> What's going on? Oh yeah, they know, they know. Luft has been found and backs off accordingly. So nothing really going well for Safira here. Top lane, I mean, Superac has now has 42 last hits, but the Jug is starting to outfarm it. Even the Dark Seas have has more net worth than him. In fact, if we switch to net worth. Don't know why that's unbound. If we switch that to net worth, we see the Juggernaut has a thousand. A thousand. That's about two thousand more than the uh, than the Ember Spirit. Not good. He needs to snowball out of place now. But here we go. There's the snowball, and there's the bolus. There's the vacuum though. Pwn will still fall. Superac did have a remnant, but didn't have the mind to use it. Did not you need it though? Flame God finishing the job, and that is a pretty significant change. Four hundred thirty gold is pretty good, and that's a thousand gold swing. They can live with that. It's going to force him close to the top because he really needs to get to the top. At this point, oh dear. At this point, Juggernaut is just killing everything on the map. 
5.3k gold is significant. Dyer's bottom tower's getting the business. Tornado, random tornado coming in. A moment will be found out here. Cold snap to finish him off, but no, Shadow Grave is there. He will anti armor here. Zafira, Fohu. Will be sucked into the snowball. No snowball coming in, but there's the evasion. There's the invisibility equals invincibility. Walks back, but there's a sentry ward there waiting for him. Back up, just moved in, but they will not pursue. Or will they? Depends. We'll keep an eye on that. Getrox pushing in on his own here. Basically the split push. Moving away now. Giga again. <laughs> What's the Fiend script? Actually missed the Fiend script. Hits the spike carapace. That's a 100 second call now. And Getrox will be uh, now. Will be uh, in a world of hurt if he doesn't get out of here. Oh. DPS not enough. Tower as well. Giga will also save the day. Sort of. And now with the speed of life like. Really haven't talked about him, he's not too high up on the network, but really what he needs is XP, and he's level 9, uh, one of the highest levels in the game, he's, well, equal to 4 other people, I guess, I mean, that's all you can really say. Should be a bit higher for mid, but considering he hasn't gotten any kills, it's fine. Now, what do they need to make happen here? Lena's building a ag, uh, her Yules, which is definitely going to give her a bit more versatility. And a moment really just doesn't need much anymore. He's got his boots ready, so and he has his ult. He has his Shallow Grave at level two. He probably should get it to level three, so he can have a bit more insane movement range. I mean, really, you just really it's not the most important thing. However, you want Shadow Wave mostly at this point of the game. You can get Shallow Grave levels later. And at this point, Subrak, well, he's got the BOT, so he can fight anyway if he wants. He's going for the, uh, the Quili, I guess. Doesn't make much sense to get it now. I would just start farming for a Battle Fury. This does suggest something. Maybe he had to save that from earlier. Now, Gedrock will Omni Slash, but the Omni Slash will fail. Or not. As he still gets Nyx Assassin. Here comes the stuns on Gedrox. They really need to get Gedrox here in order to get them the shard hit perfectly. And that was 859 gold. Juggernaut, an important strategic target there. But they will lose Dazzle on the mid lane. And they actually might lose more. Fohu getting vacuumed right back in here. With Pepe moving in at the background. Nightmare up on the speed of life to save him. And now Subrak will bolus up. Pepe needs to snowball. But will probably fall here as he gets the right target though. Or no, Cold Snap is up. And this is over. As Speed of Life gets a double kill and they will ult to keep Luft in place. And the Nightmare's there. Pwn taking the last kill and that was 4 for nothing. 4 for nothing, that's 2k gold for TBE. Just looking at the net worth, it's 7.5k gold for TBE, about 5k for TBE XP in XP earned. They're doing well, and they've already pushed. They're about to finish pushing down the last tier to one tower of Sephira. There's nothing they can really do. A moment is caught in the EMP cold snap. <laughs> oh dear. On the background, Quepe tries to get something. A moment isn't actually dead yet, and they will get a kill on the on Pone. A moment able to keep himself alive with the shallow grave. 1.3k gold. Going the way of Sephira, so. At least some consolation, but the Lena is now Nightmare again. Snowball to save. All rotate back behind the lines. But now the spin's there. Foe who will die. And Sephira now looking maybe to get some revenge here, but are they high level enough? Subarak. Subarak. Doesn't have slate of fist levels. Has a marginal amount of mana. Has 967 health. He has to engage from. A reasonable distance away it's not going to be easy especially with the amount of lockdown that uh, TBE have one false move and he will die Senegata uh, about to get an ult back as well so the next fight I mean I can really see this going the way of TB if it goes the way of TB they're gonna lose a tier 2 might even lose a tier 3 
there's the Yasha up for Gedrox. Going a very aggressive early fighting, but probably been build that, the Sanj into the Yasha. Might even go Manta, seeing as he was split pushing earlier. Uh, Lina getting her final delivery for the Yules. And after that, it's probably going to be the rush towards the Ags. Uh, they smoke up on the mid lane as well, trying to get behind the TBE, who are now 5 manning as well. They have counter smoked. Basically, unknowingly smoked to a counter smoke. And in this case, will they find anything? Yes, wards. Don't see anything. Wait, they did catch up the smoke, maybe. They did catch up the smoke there. And they will find a moment who will get used up, but will immediately die. Ult was used for that as well as an EMP. Worth it, maybe. They get a kill from that, and they force Safira out of the bush. The only one really pushing right now is Subrak, and he doesn't really have much. He needs that Battle Fury fast. And now they will push through the tier 2 bot lane as TBE raise the pressure. Zephyr have basically lost all their rush control right now. I mean, tier 2 mid is still standing, but for how long is the question? Especially with a ward like this down. Rush control has basically been lost right now. And Radiant can abuse that pretty well. Now Luft <laughs> will not attempt anything. He needs kills and he's died three times. Luft is not not doing very well right now. I do a moment even placing a defensive ward. TBE playing their playing their advantage, just playing their team fight. They know they have the team fight. They know they can just five man this and win. And there is a moment once again. He's already died five times in this game, and uh, Gedrox is moving right in on this. Will Omni slash, and of course he's indestructible then, so Luft has no chance. He doesn't keep going. Will they push through the tier 2 mid, or will they decide to go for more kills? That is the question. They won't. They will probably even, maybe even look towards Rosh. Seeing as they have the upper hand right now, they have the entirety of Sephira forced into a very defensive position. Subaric, the only one who dares to push, because he has the all-important boots of travels. Uh, Giga actually moving in with the uh, <laughs> with the Glimmer Cape. Superak is now going to be held in place, and this is what I was talking about. Control is big, but not enough backup coming in on time. They focus on objectives anyway. Kills mean nothing. Objectives mean everything. That is the way Dota works, ladies and gentlemen. And they do take the tier two, but now Safira come in with a counter four man of their own. They want to catch someone here. They will catch out Senegata, but hit and the anti armor is there. Speed of life gets gets hit, but will survive thanks to good placement of nightmares and cold embrace. But it is the Winter's Curse onto Subrak. They really want the kill here, but they will be unable to get it. Or will they? Tornado misses the mark. Oh ho ho ho! What a snipe! Subrak blinking right into that. Invoker. Unbeknown. <laughs> Gets a very lucky kill there onto Zubarak, and that's a nice amount of gold. A very nice amount of gold for the side of TBE. There's not much as much as Sephira could get if they would just pick someone off right now. Anyone really, even if it was Gedrox. Gedrox doesn't have the axe yet, he's not the danger right now. He's about to finish off the side of Yash, so going incredibly aggressive. He's got life, he's got health. I mean, you need to pick him off now, but the problem is you, you... You neglect everything else, and I can understand why. They can't... They, they're looking for an opening. They need chances. They need more chances, but the problem is they're not going to get them if the game keeps proceeding like this. It's already 12k gold up for TBE. If the advantage gets any bigger, then it's going to be over. 7.5k gold for TB as well. I mean, you can recover from that, but it will be tricky. You need a perfect team fight here, and this might be what they're looking for. Getrox unaware of everyone in the in his vicinity. Here comes the stun, here comes the assault. There's the fallen assault. Getrox does fall here, but there's the team fight. Pone getting stunned up by Spike Carapace, though. Will fall before he's able to deal significant damage. Subrak 
However, silenced by the Orchid. There goes their damage, and he will probably die to Orchid. No, able to heal it up, and it's dead. Meanwhile, on the back lines, Giga taking a lot of damage. Colin Breast will save him here. Luft will fall. Takes a lot of damage to that. But he's a perfect Winter's Curse. Have you seen one? A lot of damage being dealt everywhere. Nightmare's being placed per perfectly. Bane will take the Ember, though. Invoker on the cleanup. Bane and Invoker on the cleanup. Quip Coupe will be the last one to fall here. And that's four for two. Up their and even then, it's equal. Just look at the changes. Even though TBE gained, they lost a lot as well. That is not something you see every day. A two for four with the advantage only being 100 gold. It's 1,300 XP, but it's only 100 gold. Problem is, what happens when the gap starts separating even more? What happens when Getrox gets even more farmed? That's only his second death this game. And he has a lot of net worth. It's 3k ahead of Subarak. 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 I mean, you can see the dip was okay, but it wasn't significant. They need a bit more. They need more. And will they get more is the question. Will they get more opportunities? Will they find more farm? Will they find more places to take those fights? It's not going to be an easy thing. Invoker picking up a moment on the back line. I don't think that's strange anymore, to be honest. A moment cannot stand around on his own anymore. And Coupe will also fall here. Brains up is out. He will snowball, trying to escape. Getting good ice shards off, but not enough. At this stage of the game, I can say that Sephira are not going to get more. They have to find opportunities. They are looking for Luft. They have very aggressive wards. TB. Very aggressive wards into the Dire jungle. Uh, dire lanes. They know every move. At the speed of life, we'll even find Fohu, and that's going to be used up by her. Vacuum to stop the TP. <laughs> Absolutely non-consensuality here. Will they use this advantage to rush? Even a small advantage like that can lead to rush. Only three people up on Sephira are now going to be four. They suspect the rush, but they know they are... But uh, TB knows Sephira is separated. And rush will fall quickly. Little damage taken. Maybe not quickly, but it will fall fast. Same thing. Anyway. <clears throat> at this point... Yeah, look, I mean, look at Ember Spirit. He doesn't even have a Battle Fury yet. It's very difficult. Very, very difficult. To really come back from this when one of your main farming tools is missing a Luft will just eat another death here. At the speed of life, is just a walking solo machine right now. They've usually got someone in backup as backup, but for now, there's the team fight. So Subak's trying to get as much done, but the Winter's Curse. No, not them. Yeah, the Winter's Curse comes in. The only slash to kill Coupe. Nice shell grave to try and keep him alive. Will he die? Yes. Gedrock's getting the kill. Good tornado as well. Keeping two up. And the healing ward will heal everyone. With the cold embrace. To finish off. And they will take this tower. Freely and quickly. Pudge boys. Cooper says it. 28 to 7. Will it be 28? Will it be 29 to 7? Will it be 29 to 8? Maybe. Unlucky a moment. Can't even get his shadow grave off. It's going too quickly for him. They will take mid Rex quickly here. Not much to be said, really. Let's look at the gold advantage. And you cannot return from that, Sephira. You cannot return from that. That's an advantage only Eternal Envy could throw. And even then, not in, late, not in the latest games. Not in the latest games he's been playing. Only one really, really without the net worth is Winter Wyvern. As they do find Coupe again. Trying to walk in there. They're trying to find some opening, but there goes Nyx again. Fuhu can't do much. There's the tornado. Who does it catch? It does catch Ember, and there's the GG. As TBE win the first game of this best of three. Astonishingly quickly. 26 minutes of game is not really a lot. And the real reason is Safira could not get their strategy working. They needed snowballs, and they didn't get it.
They didn't get the snowballs. They lost from the second. They didn't manage to get enough kills. And unfortunately, that's the way it goes. Anyway, please stay tuned. We will be back with Game 3 in a few minutes. I have been Morality Claus. Peace.